we are supposed to be debating the law C-92. The law which is about children, the youth, families of First Nations, Inuit, and Métis. And we're not debating that right now because instead we're debating, uh, because this is what the Conservatives wanted, they wanted to debate this infrastructure report. An infrastructure report which demonstrates the poor management of the Conservative Party when they were in power about the public good in Montreal for the Champlain Bridge. And instead, we're not debating this very important law concerning child welfare for our children. When I first gave my maiden speech in the House of Commons three years ago, it was about child welfare. It was about the 11,000 kids in care in the province of Manitoba. And since that time, I've had the opportunity in my riding, one of the poorest ridings in the country, of speaking with mothers and fathers who have had their children taken, such as Chantel Hutchinson, who drove all the way from Brandon, Manitoba, to come see me in Winnipeg to advocate somehow to get her child back, her little girl. And I keep this photo of the little girl above my uh, stove so that when I'm cooking in my condo, in my apartment here in, uh, in Ottawa, I remember why I was elected. And even though we weren't able to help the mother get her child back, Chantel, who I hope she's listening right now, I hope she knows that this legislation which we have here today is because of her hard work of advocating not only on the behalf of her child, but all the thousands and thousands of children and families, not only in Manitoba, in Saskatchewan and Alberta, but right across the country. And this legislation is so important that I call upon the Conservatives to not play games anymore, here, here. to continue debate, to stop debate on this report which while I'm sure it's very important, this child welfare legislation is so important that it needs to move forward. It needs to move on through this House and into the Senate. And if we spend a lot of time playing these games, this legislation will not see force in law. And we will not affect the change. We will continue doing the same things that we did under the Indian Residential School. Indian Residential Schools we're about placing children in large institutions. But back in the 60s, we slowly changed that. We slowly changed how the, the, the system worked. We started placing children in adoptions, and we call that the, uh, the 60s scoop, the stolen generation. And then in the 80s, you know, we stopped using adoptions, and we started doing foster families, child welfare. And we continue to do that today. And it is extremely sad that that continues. But we are just perpetuating the same mistakes of the past, but just in a different way, more diffused. Instead of having concentrated children in one place, we've just spread them around society. Yet that's what happens day in and day out in this country for some of the poorest citizens who can afford lawyers, who can afford to really advocate on their own behalf who are sometimes only 18, 19 years old, who did get pregnant, but who want to love their child. So, and while I say, I know there's people that will say online and they'll write me and they'll say, you know, the, you know there are terrible people who need to have their children taken. The province of Manitoba, uh, through the Health Sciences Center Research Branch, published a report looking at child welfare and 80, 7% of all children taken are taken not because of issues related to abuse, it's taken of issues related to poverty. 87% related to poverty. That leaves 13%. And incredibly enough, only 13%, that 13% is where we have allegations of abuse. Of that 13%, only 12% are substantiated abuse meaning the vast, vast majority, there is no abuse involved. It is just because people are too poor to look after their own children or for other issues. 
And that is a travesty of justice in our age. And that's why it's important that we have some consensus to stop debating Report 51 and move on to C-92, a historic piece of legislation which will affect great change across our nation, which is needed now before this parliament ends, while we have the opportunity and the chance. Do not let this occasion slip through our fingers. Every parliamentarian who participates in this debate on C-92, who lets this legislation move forward, will be able to look themselves in the mirror, Mr. President. They will be able to look themselves in the mirror when they're at home, and they can look themselves in the eye at 2 o'clock in the morning and rethink that they made a difference.